Yes, ma'am. Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Great Hills Moravian Church. On this day, the first Sunday after the Epiphany, the 8th of January of 2023. Welcome and Happy New Year to everybody who wasn't with us last week. A couple brief announcements to get our day started. Uh, this is very important. Please mark your calendars when you get home with this. Annual church council meeting will take place on Sunday, January 29th, following worship service. All members of the Great Kills Moravian Church are encouraged to attend to review the year of 2022 and to elect con con congressional leaders uh, and pass a budget for the coming year. A quorum is required for voting. Please make every effort to attend this important meeting. That's on Sunday, January 29th. Um, contribution envelopes are in your church mail slot. So if you wanna stop by and pick them up, they're available. The church office will be closed on Monday, January 16th in observance of Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Um, Lydia, our sister Lydia, is going to be moving to Florida at the end of the week. So if anybody wants to drop her a line and wish her prayers and travel safe, please do so before the end of the week. She's expecting, not that she's expecting, but it'll make her feel good if we all give her a call and say, hey, we'll miss you. Um, so I guess that's it basically on that. So let's begin our service today. I did that. It begins with the watchword. It comes to us from Isaiah chapter 42, verse 3. A bruised reed he will not break. A dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. Isaiah chapter 42. Now let's ask the congregation, as able, please stand for our call to worship. I will be reading from the lightly colored text. And if the congregation could please follow by reading from the bold colored text. Give unto the Lord, O you mighty ones, give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. I'd like to ask the congregation, please open the Moravian Book of Worship to page 313 for our gathering hymns, songs of thankfulness and praise.
Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters. A very blessed New Year to all of you. I hope God's blessing will be upon you for this year. Please turn to our Liturgy of Epiphany on page 65. All your creatures, Lord, will praise you, and all your people will give you thanks. They will speak of the glory of your royal power and your might. Everyone will know your mighty deeds and the glorious majesty of your kingdom. Your rule is eternal, and you are king forever. You, Lord, are righteous in all you do, merciful in all your acts. You are near those who call to you who call to you with sincerity. You supply the needs of all who honor you, who hear their cries and save them. We will ever praise you, Lord, and all creation praise your holy name forever. <laughs> With sincere hearts and open minds, let us now acknowledge the sin that entangles us and prevents us from doing God's will. Together, compassionate Lord, you call us to a higher standard than we have achieved. We therefore bow in honest confession of those thoughts, words, and deeds which have missed the mark. Within our families, we have loved imperfectly. Among sisters and brothers in the church, we have not fully walked in the light. Often our congregations have not reflected the rich diversity of people in our communities. In our witness to the world, our lives have not adequately testified to your redeeming power. Forgive us, gracious Lord, for permitting ourselves to be distracted from the goal of our discipleship. Heal the brokenness of our hearts and restore us to you, our first love.
There is no condemnation now for those who live in union with Christ Jesus. Hear the word of our Lord. I do not condemn you. Go, but do not sin again. Please stand. God created the heavens and stretched them out, fashioned the earth and all that lives there, and gave life and breath to all its people. And now the Lord God says to his servant, I, the Lord, have called you and given you power to see that justice is done on earth. Through you, I will make a covenant with all people. Through you, I will bring light to the nations. You will open the eyes of the blind. And set free those who sit in dark prisons. God shows no partiality to race or culture. All who have reverence for him and do what is right are acceptable to God. Let us give thanks to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For in our union with Christ, he has blessed us by giving every spiritual blessing <coughs> in the heavenly world. Let us praise God for his glorious grace for the free gift he gave us in his dear son. How great is the grace of God, which he gave to us in such large measure. This is the good news. Through Jesus's death and resurrection, all the people may participate in God's blessings. We are members of the same body and share in the question. There is no longer rich or poor, black or white, male or female, for we are all one in union with Christ Jesus. If we belong to Christ, then we are members of God's family, and we will receive what God has promised. Please be seated as we pray the prayer of Epiphany, prayer of intercession. Let us offer interces intercessions and petitions for the needs of the world. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, as disciples, as disciples called, called to your service, service we, we pray, pray for the salvation, salvation of all. Of all. Lead us to bear witness to friends and neighbors in this community. Fill our words and manner of life with the convincing power of your spirit. Intensify our love for all people that our discipleship may be confirmed as genuine through our obedience to your call, bestow on many the faith to be saved. Give every gift and blessing to your witnesses in all places. May those who suffer because they have named you as Lord be strengthened to endure every temptation. Give courage, insight, and love and patience to those who have left their own people 
to proclaim the gospel to those yet unreached. Savior, grant that your church may always grow in grace and in numbers. Bring multitudes from every people to bow and confess that you are Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. I looked, and there was a great multitude. No one could count all the people. They were from every race, tribe, nation, and language, and they stood in front of the throne and of the Lamb, holding palm branches in their hands. They called out in a loud voice, salvation comes from our God who sits on the throne and from the Lamb. Praise, glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, honor, power, and might belong to our God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The congregation may be seated. It is now time to present our offering, our gifts to God. for our doxology.
Now for our bless, uh, prayer of blessing. Please join me. Dear, Dear Lord, Lord, you sit, you sit as, as king, king over us, us forever. Give us strength. We, we thank, thank you for the life and all that you have done for us. us. Bless, bless us and bless these offerings. We give back a portion of what you have blessed us with. No matter how small in gratitude, we give you our praise and thanks. Amen. Now our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, I'd like to ask the congregation, please remain standing and open to the Moravian Book of Worship to page 324 for Jesus' name, Jesus' name. Moving forward in our service, we come to God's word for us today. Our first scriptural reading will be a responsive reading. I will be reading from the lightly colored text, and if the congregation could please read from the bold colored text. We'll be reading from Isaiah chapter 42, verses 1 through 9. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 1. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him, and he will bring justice to the nation. He will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break. A smoldering whip he will not snuff out. In faithfulness he will bring forth justice. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes justice on earth. In his law, the islands will put their hope. This is what God the Lord has said. He who created the heavens, who stretched them out, who spread them out on the earth and all comes out of it, who gives breath to its people and life to those who walk in it. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles to open eyes that are blind, to free captives from prisons, and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not yield my glory to another or my praise to idols. See, the See former, the former things, things have taken, go ahead. Go ahead. See, the former, former things, things have, have taken, taken place, place and, and new things, things I declare. declare. Before, Before the spring, spring to be, I announce them, them to you. you. That was the readings from Isaiah chapter 42. Moving further along to our second scriptural reading, it comes to us from Acts chapter 10. I will be reading verses 34 through 43. Acts, Peter at the Cornelius house, chapter 10, verse 34. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, 
but accepts men from every nation who fear him and do what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, telling the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. These were the readings from Acts chapter 10. Now for our gospel, Pastor Blondel. Uh, Amen. Our gospel lesson comes to us from Matthew chapter 3, reading verses 13 through 17. The baptism of Jesus. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, let it be so now, it is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my son whom I love, with him I am pleased. This is the word of our gospel. <clears throat> Let us pray. Lord, as you have been generous with us through the blessings of your limitless love, we pray that we may have that same generous spirit. Empower us to give freely to others in ways that would best serve them. Help us to give without judgment or fear, trusting in your providence for us all. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. Again, we read where the prophet Isaiah is telling about Jesus the Messiah that is to come into the world. He tells of what is expected of this Messiah and how God calls, his, calls him his servant, meaning God placed him into the world to do his will through obedience and righteousness. Isaiah foretold what was proclaimed in Matthew in saying, Behold, my servant, whom I uphold, my soul delights. He will bring justice, justice for truth. He continues that this servant will not fail nor be discouraged. He will, be, he will establish justice, justice in the earth. God directed and expected much from this servant. This Messiah will do many things. He will open our blind eyes, release those who are in prisons of darkness, and give them light. So God was saying that what, was ha what has happened before has passed, and new things will come forth because of this new servant of his, which is his son. Now, this Messiah has certain qualities that are beneficial to mankind. Isaiah said in verse three that a bruised reed he will not break and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. 
he will faithfully bring forth justice, justice. So how do we equate a reed and a whip to Jesus who is to come? A reed in itself cannot produce grain. It is non-functioning, broken, useless. A dimly burning wick will not give much light. So this is to say that the Messiah will not break us or neglect us when we are tender and fragile. When we are hurt and distressed, broken and crushed. When we are lost and lowly and whatever else life throws at us, he will lift us up from these demons. He will heal us. Jesus will exhibit tender care of us. He will heal us so that we can grow and be productive again, and our light will shine brightly. There are many in our society, many whose reed are broken. There are many in our society whose lights are dim. And Jesus was placed to see, to see to it that the light shines always in all of us. It's an ongoing service to us. He was born, he was born to be of service to us. Now, again, these are the expectation of God for the son that he sent to us. When it, when it was prophesied, it was for us to know what the life and work of the Christ was to be, along with those who follow him, which are us. Behold the spirit-filled servant in whom God sent. He sent, he sent not a fighter, not one who shows the domination, but one who will instill justice on earth to everyone, everywhere. Christ will not separate, will not alienate, will not abandon us, but will keep working within us until justice, until justice is served. Jesus said, will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? He will see that they get justice. This is by the way of Jesus. Injustice, injustice is a human condition and a human cause. It is up to us then to follow Jesus in addressing that situation for a change, for a change to happen. Some may not understand why preachers constantly preach about justice, but we must understand because injustice is a human condition and it is evident in so many areas of our lives and in our world. It must be addressed, it must be confronted. It must be addressed because God sees this. God knows the harm it does to his children. That is the reason, that is the reason that he said through the prophet Isaiah, that the Messiah will faithfully bring forth justice. Bring forth justice. Now, this is something that we all must seek because it was ordained by God. That is why many preachers call themselves social justice preachers. God said that we must correct this situation, correct this condition. And we cannot, and we should not turn a blind eye to it or from it and not see, not see the need for it, not see the need for all to be treated fairly as children of God and for us to live the way God wants us to live. Justice is one of the key points in Isaiah chapter one, verse 17. I believe he called for God's people to embrace God's standard of justice, the impartial treatment of all, equality, fair 
and just. Learn to do good, rebuke, rebuke the oppressor, defend those who have no one to speak for them. Loving our neighbor as we love ourselves is the key to invoke justice. Because if we do, then we could not possibly be unjust to others. <clears throat> if we can do these things, justice, I think, will be served. God is just, God is loving. This is how we are called to live. We do not look at certain conditions of life, how we live, what we do, as one that is not worthy of our attention, but worthy to make it better. These are human injustices, not God's justice. There are standards of justice that comes from God. And to keep justice, to keep justice as part of our constant goal is to be filled with the Holy Spirit of Christ. To be as Christ was, to be mindful, to be mindful of all human circumstances. God was pleased when he said, here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him, he said. He will bring forth justice to the nations. When we move forward into Jesus's time now, when he was baptized by John, as he emerged from the water, God spoke these words, this is my son whom I love, with whom I am well pleased. This was the beginning of Jesus's ministry. Luke said that Jesus was 30 years old. So what was it about Jesus in these, especially the formative years that pleased God? What was Jesus about that pleased God so much that he made this proclamation? There's only one account in the scriptures about Jesus as a boy. This is the time when he was 12 years old in the temple and he was amazing his teachers with his knowledge of the scriptures. Luke tells us that the time in between that Jesus grew, he grew not only in stature, but he grew in wisdom and in favor with God and men. So during this time, he learned what he needed to learn. The love of God, his father, the love of neighbor and keeping God's commandments. Jesus was prepared and ready for his ministry to begin. God was proud to say, this is the Messiah, the chosen one. This was confirmation that this man who walked among us was ready to do God's will. He walked on earth like us, but without sin. He was perfect and doing the will of God. That is why God was pleased. Now, we know that we are not perfect. Some people may say they are, but we are not perfect. If we were perfect, I don't believe that we would have needed Jesus in our lives. But because we are not, he was placed to fill that gap. He was placed to do what God ordains, to save us, to give us salvation and everlasting life. Salvation and everlasting life so that we can become righteous, receive the grace of God and enter his kingdom. So can God say about us that he's pleased? Can he? Are we pleasing to God? Do we live a life as such? What do we need to do to be acceptable to our loving father so that he can say, these are my children in whom 
I am well pleased. How do we do it? What do we need to do? And how do we know? How do we know what is pleasing to God? First and foremost, we must use Jesus as an example. We walk this earth as Jesus did, or at least very close to how he did. We do these things by number one, we submit to God's authority. Know that he has the power over us. Number two, know of the gift of grace and the gift of salvation that was given, that were given to us. And we receive these things in humility. Number four, we accept that his grace, his grace is not something that we earn we didn't have to do anything to earn the grace of God. But his grace is because he loves us. And finally, we are obedient. We are obedient to his will for us. If we live with these things in our lives, and if we acknowledge that we love God and desire to be his followers, followers of Christ even, we show honor and this will indeed please God. These are choices we as Christians must make. And along with these things, justice will be served. As Jesus was placed on this earth, he was placed to see that these things are carried out carried out through us. And that is what we are called to do. Look at Jesus, do as Jesus did and carry out these things. In the book of Acts, Paul goes on to reinforce the nature in which Jesus comes to us. Jesus showed no partiality. Again, all are treated equally. With that, we show righteousness as he ordained through the prophets and through Jesus, who was anointed, who was anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, doing good and healing all those who are, who are oppressed. Can we do the same so that God is pleased with us? Can justice be sought for the oppressed by us? so that God is pleased with us? When we stop and take stock in how the world is, do we realize that our divine father may not be pleased when he sees all the, the things that's going on in this world? Do we see that he's not pleased and we ought to execute some type of change and for a change, we must seek justice in which in turn will show love, will show obedience because that is what God has put forth. We must know Jesus and we must know what he represents in our lives. He was obedient to God. He was obedient in seeking justice for all in all forms. We must know Jesus and what he has done and what he can do for us and surrender ourselves totally to him. He can transform us if we only follow him. We look, we look at all that God has done for us. And we look at it in the form of Jesus and know, and know that we must give back something in the answering, in the answering of the question from Micah. He stated, he has shown you what is good. And in turn, what does he require of you? But to do justly, 
to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. This is what we do to hear God say, this is my daughter, this is my son, whom I love and whom I am well pleased. Amen. Let us pray. We pray, dear Lord, that you will right all the wrongs that are taking place in our world and bring justification to those that are being treated unjustly. Show us the way to compassion and to do what we could, even if it's just to speak up. Give us your leading so that we can follow you and be an example. Bless us all so that we can always seek, always seek to do your will. Amen. Please stand as we turn to our hymn of response, number 320, The People Who in Darkness Walk. Six eighty-eight. Six eighty-eight. It's always something that goes on. <laughs> Amen. Please receive the benediction. May God bless us with anger at justice, oppression, and exploitation of God's children, so that we may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless us with tears to shed for those who suffer pain, rejection, hunger, and war, so that we may reach out our hands to comfort them and to turn their pain into joy. In the name of Jesus, whom through his birth, life, death, and resurrection brought saving grace to us all. Okay, now page 320 as our parting hymn. The people who in darkness walk have seen a glorious light. On them broke forth the heavenly dawn who dwelt in death and night. 